Hi, Jeff Simon here at Sun and Fun 2025. I'm here with Jake McDonald. How are you doing? I'm great, Jeff. Thank you. From Air Cover Engineering, which you're going to hear more about because they have taken over the rights to the Titan aircraft. Yep. Which obviously we are building. You've been watching that going on for years with this build in our house, and you're going to learn a lot more about that. But today we're going to talk about something even cooler. It's this amazing. Fairchild Merlin that you've restored. Yeah. All right. You got to tell me the story first of, of your little bit of, about your family background and then what brought this aircraft to life and brought it here? Well, uh, my background is just 100% aviation. It's uh, either crop dusting or cattle. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in Australia in a, in a, a farming crop dusting uh, uh, family and my uh, my grandfather, my grandmother, all of my uncles, my my father everyone in my family is a pilot it's the only thing we know how to do <laughs> that's awesome yeah um so uh, uh i was lucky enough to get my pilot's license at a really young age and um, had some uh really great opportunities uh moved to america when i was 19 to continue flying over here and yeah the world's been my oyster since it's been great <laughs> it's fantastic so this is this is a very unique aircraft yeah so as we understand it this is one of two that's currently flying in the whole world in the world yeah, and uh, the other one doesn't fly very much. <laughs> uh, we're, we put about 100 hours a year on this one. It's a, it's a fantastic airplane. It's a, uh, it's a 1969 uh, Merlin 2B. Uh, it is essentially what was supposed to be the, the competitor of the King Air. Uh -huh. uh, it's uh, a Queen Air wing, Queen Air undercarriage, uh, Honeywell Garrett engines, and a completely uh, unique swear engine Fairchild fuselage that, that's a circular fuselage that later became the fuselage used on the, the metro liners oh really so kind of like a forerunner of the metro liners thought that they were going to take over for yep. the king air with parts from a queen air like yeah really frankenstein together yeah it was a it was an agreement between beechcraft Fairchild, and swear engine uh -huh. uh, they were built in texas from parts all over the place uh, there was a handful of them built, I believe, in the 60s. Uh, there's two of them left, and here's one. Wow. So tell me a little bit about the design itself, because it's basically a corporate executive transport, right? Yeah. So uh, it was kind of a, a failed premise, uh, simply because of the use of the, the uh, Queen Air wing. The Queen Air wing has a carry-through spa structure that goes straight through the middle of the fuselage. Because of that, you got a major spa hump right in the middle of the uh, uh the fuselage, which is easy to step over, but impossible to load cargo into. Oh. Uh, the other thing is, it's being a circular fuselage, the door is integral to the structure of the airplane. Okay. Uh, because it's integral to the structure of the airplane, you cannot open the door in flight at all. And you can't even tow it with the door open. You can't even yeah. tow it? No. With so, it. so that made it a one-trick pony. Yeah. It's great at carrying people, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that's pretty wow. Well, take us around. Let's walk around a little bit. Great, yeah. Tell me um, what the story is. So it's got, obviously this is the biggest part of the story. Yeah. So it's uh, got two Dash One Garretts. Uh, they're uh, 685 horsepower a piece. Piece. They're excellent fuel efficient airplane, but uh, very very loud. Uh, you can see when we came in here today, there was a there was a line of people with their fingers in their ears <laughs> as we taxied in. <laughs> Uh, it'll it'll they're, tell they're you it's sleeker here. sleeker than the engines that are on the King Air. They are. They're, they're very, very sleek. They're a, um, a single shaft uh, direct drive turbine, so the, the propellers don't feather or anything like that. Uh, the intake's at the front, the exhaust is at the back. Uh, very, very fuel efficient. Uh, a very uh, high performance engine. They're excellent in this uh, uh, use. Uh, and yeah, we use them a lot in the crop dusters as well. They're they're uh, becoming uh, rarer. You know, the, the Pratt and Whitney's or the PT sixes are, are very very prevalent. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you need a good team to, to work on them. Thankfully, I got an excellent team. Uh, and yeah, they're you, you don't hear fuel efficiency in in turboprop. Yeah. Too often. Well, uh, today we're coming down at about 200 and 225 knots uh, at a little less than 60 gallons combined. R combined? Yeah. Wow. So it was a little less than 30 gallons a side. That's truly efficient. Yeah. That's and amazing. That was at 19,000 feet with a seven, uh, 7 PSI pressure differential. That's crazy. Can you show us the inside? Absolutely. It's filthy. <laughs> That's okay. We'll just take a quick peek. I, I, I love unique aircraft like this. Yeah. It's, it's, she's a cool old girl. Uh, 
So yeah, do you want to take the camera or what do yeah, you do? Yeah, I'll take this and, and uh, follow you along. Okay. Well, come on in. Oh man. <laughs> No, so, this is awesome. Yeah, so we just flew uh, here from Missouri today. So uh, it's, uh, you know, just been doing a whole bunch of flying. But it's like crashing someone's house. With that's it, yeah. They don't have a chance. But really, this is gorgeous and spacious. Thank you. Well, there's the spa carry through structure that we have issues with. Uh, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fine for uh, passenger transport, but less of a, uh, an ideal situation for cargo. Wow. Very, very cool. Yeah. And a really cool flight deck. Yeah, so... Uh, what you get to say with a plane of this size? <laughs> well, it's a, a G600, uh, and we have the GMX200, uh, and just the 530 and 430. Uh, it's It does everything we need it to do. It's fully coupled uh, uh, approaches, you know, wow. and it's full no nice. And it is just such a fantastic, stable IFR platform. Uh, you can take it to minimums all day and not worry about it. It's an absolutely fantastic airplane uh, to do IFR stuff in. Oh, so, so, so cool. And the turbine, you know, twin turbine reliability just gives you extreme confidence. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, well, let's step back out for yeah. and uh, ask a couple more questions of your review. All right, so, Mustang, tell me just a little bit about what is it that uh, kind of got you connected to decide to take over what was kind of uh, the John's legacy, what he was going to do with that, and, and really move it forward, which I, is what I'm really most impressed about, about what you're doing. Well, thank you. Uh, so, Warbirds and, uh, and, you know, Warbird aviation, you know, historical aviation has always been a major passion of mine. Uh, I was lucky enough when I got my AMP license in Australia uh, uh, when I was a teenager, uh, we did it on a restoration facility, uh, restoring a P-40. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, we pulled the P-40 out of the... Uh, out Not of many the... people can say they got their AMP by <laughs> restoring a P-40. No, it was pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's, really, it's really awesome. I was, I was a 13-year-old just in, in heaven. Uh, uh, I, was, I wasn't involved in the uh, recovery. Uh, but we did a lot of uh, uh, part shipment. The airplane was uh, uh, pulled out of the jungle in Papua New Guinea. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, it, when we bought it back, it was uh, a whole bunch of uh, corroded, mangled, twisted pieces. And uh, we, uh, we rebuilt the whole uh, thing back. Those at North Queensland Warbirds in Mariba, Australia. Uh, and now that airplane is uh, VHMIK in Australia. Wow. It, it's a, a, yeah, it was just a fantastic experience. I, I, I couldn't have hoped for a better circumstance. Wow. Um, also, uh, my father and myself, uh, uh, we, we purchased a Yak um, when I was a teenager uh, from Bulgaria. We bought the airplane back and uh, over the course of you know, several years we restored it while I was doing my apprenticeship at the same time. So I, I had a real love for radial engines and you know, high horsepower V, v yeah, engines yeah. And, and all of the rest of that and high performance, beautiful restorations. Uh, so much so that my, when I moved to America when I was 19, uh, my first job was actually at Tri-State Aviation uh -huh. in uh, North Dakota, working for Cindy Beck, restoring P-51s. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was lucky enough to move to the States when I was 19 to rebuild Mustangs. That's, that's amazing. So then you discover what's going on with the Titan. Yeah, so actually, so in 2003, uh, I purchased a DVD uh, for Titan. I was 11 years old, and I, <laughs> I, I really, really wanted a T-51. Uh, couldn't make it work. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, I remember getting the DVD before YouTube, before any of that stuff, and we watched it over and over and over again. I've always loved the T-51, always wanted one. Uh, didn't really get there. Uh, of course, there was a tragedy last year. Um, I found myself in a position with, uh, with my other companies. Uh, I have a, a fantastic crew that is is very very capable of restoration uh -huh. uh, we we purchase aircraft restore them and they either sell them or add them to our, our fleet uh, with with their capabilities and, and our facilities uh, and my absolute love of the p51 and the t51 um, and it was just it was a no-brainer yeah I, I i decided that you know we had to uh, uh breathe life back into this airplane and and take it from what it is, 
which is a fantastic airplane, and try and make it even better. Yeah. You know, and continue to support the, the current builders and the current uh, uh, pilots, and then improve upon the design as best as we can, mm -hmm. and, and try and give it some more life. And you know. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things I'm most impressed with. As a builder myself, I mean, you know, Jake stepped in, took over the, the rights to the company, and has uh, really been digging in immediately in what can be improved to make this an, ev an even safer aircraft. Yes. And, and, you know, the, I've always felt that the, the Titan, the T-51 Mustang, as it was originally designed, was meant to give you the, the look and the fun experience mm -hmm. of a reproduction historic Mustang aircraft, kind of in uh, uh, hidden sheep's clothing, yeah. right? That it's actually a puppy dog. It's yeah. actually meant to keep you safe. It's actually meant to be easy to fly and, and reasonable to build and all those things. And the idea that, that air cover engineering is now going to kind of double down on that yeah. and uh, is, is really wonderful. And you're, you've, you've even started already. You've already started delivering upgraded components. We're getting some right now over here. It's, um, it's really cool. So I, I just want to say thank you. We'll have yeah. more to follow. We'll have Absolutely. you on Social Flight Live, hopefully, talking about your whole history and your whole story. That'd be great. Um, and uh, there's more to come. So for Sun and Fun 2025, I'm Jeff Simon. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you all blue skies.